Hey everybody, Casmo here. Today we're going to take a look at the symbology. And I know the last video is probably a little confusing, probably a little bit dry, uh, but unfortunately it's kind of a necessary thing to, to go through uh, so you can understand what we're looking at. But what we're going to do today is we're going to actually look at some video from a um, A64 Echo model uh, that somebody was gracious enough to send me some, some data that we could uh, kind of explore. So we're going to go through this together. If you haven't watched the video before uh, well, about symbology, uh, I really encourage you to go take a look at it. It'll help you understand because we're not going to go into uh, excruciating detail on everything here, but but we are going to reference what we've learned in the previous video. So it's probably a good idea to go check that out. And uh, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and start here and take a look. All right, so we're going to start off. We're, we're on the ground. Um, I've got it paused here. We're on the ground. It uh, looks like the, it's a nighttime mission because they're up FLIR. So you can see up there at the top left, it says FLIR. They're 44%. That's their, their mass torque. Uh, if you remember in the center, we've got that crosshair. That is our line of sight reticle. So it means a couple different things. So right now, uh, what we're going to look at it though, is it's a top-down representation of the aircraft. And you can see a little dot there in the center and a little circle. That little circle is going to move. And that is what you can think about top-down view. That is a representation of your cyclic. Uh, at least that's the way I, I picture it. And that is your acceleration cue. Uh, there's a little dot in the center and that uh, will be attached to kind of a, a, a stick that's going to come out and that is your velocity vector. So you're going to see that thing start moving around. That velocity vector is going to chase that acceleration cue. We're going to go ahead and start the video and of course they're hovering right now or they're about to be hovering or picking up off the ground. You can see the torque is coming up but you can see he's kind of moving that cyclic around. You see that acceleration cue or, that, or the uh, velocity vector is trying to follow that cue, right? So the cue goes to the right and left and the, the, the velocity vector is trying to catch up to it. So we're going to pause right here. All right, so uh, we're lifting up. You can see on the right side, we're up at uh, 42 feet. And you can see on the left side that, you know, the two knots, I mean, you're, you're basically not moving. Um, what we're about to transition to is the transition mode. So we're in the hover mode right now. Uh, transition mode looks uh, very similar, but you're going to see a couple things pop up. And most notably, you're going to see a horizon line pop up. It's a dash line. And you're going to see some information pop up near the, uh, the bottom left. And that's going to be the waypoint information. All right, so we'll go ahead and continue on. And you should be transitioning here any second. And there we go. So transition mode now. So that acceleration cue and velocity vector, it's on a different scale. Uh, it's not too important right now, but you can see the also we've got our uh, flight path vector showing up there. Uh, gives us a little airplane and that's just indicating where the aircraft is going, right? That's the scene of the crash. So as long as we keep that above the trees, then we know we're going to be okay. You've got that uh, diamond there. That is the head tracker, which if you remember from the video is, is just basically a uh, always pointing for the front of the aircraft kind of helps you reference things uh, you're gonna see a little crosshair there it is right there a little crosshair uh, that kind of pops in that is the other guy's line of sight so right now this pilot has the other pilots line of sight as his acquisition source and so you see those little dots appearing those little dots are guiding him towards the other guy's line of sight cue uh, so you're going to see every time that crosshair moves around, that's the other pilot's head kind of moving around looking left and right. And so there he's looking kind of forward. Uh, and they're just doing a right turn. Uh, you can see they're just kind of dragging that flight path vector just like you would in a, in a fixed wing aircraft. Uh, they're at 33 knots. So, you know, they're just above ETL, right above the trees. Uh, but you can see down at the bottom left, we've got that uh, waypoint data that popped up. So Charlie 7.5 is the waypoint they're heading to. They're currently at 0.6 kilometers away from it. And they've got their uh, ground speed there and the time to the waypoint. Now I'm pretty sure the waypoint is actually where they're, you know, taking off from and going to. Uh, so that time is going to be going to be changing. But if you were heading direct to it, it's going to tell you, you know, how long until, until you get there. As you can see up top, the heading tape is not changing based on his, his movement of his head. So it is always based off that essentially the head tracker. Uh, so the aircraft is heading at a 298. Uh, and, and that's not going to change based on the, the head movement like it would in, in some fixed wing aircraft. The information you see up at the top with the uh, the grid and, and all that stuff, that would not be there uh, in aircraft. This comes uh, through the playback, but above all the information is available you know, elsewhere in, in the aircraft. Uh, we can confirm that he is looking at the gunner's helmet site as his acquisition source. It's down there at the bottom right uh, in the uh, high action display area. So the GHS is gunner's hel gunner helmet site. And we're looking at the pilot's HMD, which we can see there on the left. You see that A with the number that's changing as he moves? That's because he's got it in auto. So again, going back to that line of sight reticule, that is what he's looking at. And the computer is basically calculating based on information that it has that what he's looking at is right now, you know, that far away. And, and you'll see it change as he kind of looks around and the computer's trying to calculate what he's looking at. 
Again, that's based solely off of what's uh, in the information of the aircraft. It, it doesn't know that that tree is there, right? So it's not looking at that tree. It's in the ground past the tree is, you know, 0.7 or, or whatever kilometers. All right, so we've got this weird baseball diamond looking thing. That is actually Charlie 75, the waypoint. Uh, so he took off from there and just doing a loop and they're heading back to the waypoint. So keeping the flight path, flight path vector above the trees so that we don't smack into it. And you'll see his airspeed start to come down and basically we're just looking at the landing area now. So as we get in a little bit closer, he's kind of slowed down a little, probably a little bit too much, uh, but we're gonna speed back up, not to be a, a backseat driver. Um, under FLIR, it, it is a little bit confusing, but uh, he's going to keep that flight path vector above the trees. And then what he's going to do is a neat little trick. He's going to use the hover bob up uh, page, which is going to drop a little hover bob up box. So once he clears these obstacles, he's going to use that to kind of tell him where the obstacles are because he can't see him anymore. I mean, he's looking straight down through the aircraft right there, uh, but he's going to drop that box when he thinks he's over the trees and then he's going to do it again, more than likely. So there's the box. Probably going to drop it one more time. All right, and now he knows, no kidding, I know I'm clear of those obstacles. So he's gonna go back into transition mode and he's got his landing area in sight and he's gonna start descending. So you can see we're just putting the flight path vector where we want to land. He's maintaining a, a good airspeed there. He's gonna 15 knots, so he's you know right at the shutter, a little bit below the shutter of ETL. And that's one thing that, you know, helicopter guys do in real life, and I don't see a whole lot in DCS, you know, it's slow, all right? Landing an aircraft is slow. You know, everyone watches Apocalypse Now and think that's how you land all the time, and it isn't, all right? On a hot LZ, sure, you're going to land like that, but generally speaking, you're going to gently bring the aircraft down. All right, this one we're going to look in flight, and we're just going to see some other things that are going on. So uh, they are at 1,000 feet. Um, he's got his gun, gunner's helmet sight. You can see it whipping around. So look down at the bottom, that box down there. So you've got that large box, the field of regard, and the field of view. You see that little dot? And that little dot is the gunner's helmet sight because that's what he's got up as his acquisition source. So you can see it moving around. It gives you an idea of where it's at. And of course, you've got the little, uh, the little Q dots as well. So they're in fused mode, which is kind of neat. Uh, this is a new Echo model thing. So it's fused between FLIR and night vision, uh, just like an NVGs, uh, which is pretty helpful. Let's use see uh, things like tracers and infrared lights and stuff. So they're flying a little bit a little bit more dynamically than we saw in the last video. Uh, you can see they're, they're above 100 knots. We've got our waypoint off there in the distance at 17 kilometers. Got our rate of descent over on the right. Uh, we've taken a lot of power out so they're just basically just kind of cruising on down to uh, treetop level. And there we can see another aircraft, probably his wingman. Uh, you can see above the high action display, or above the field of regard in the high action display, is that, that's your trim ball. So that's, you know, making sure that your aircraft's in trim. And, uh, yeah, a lot of the same stuff that we just saw in the same video, but you can kind of see it in action. So we'll let it play out for a minute here and uh, see if anything new pops up. All right, so here we are at the uh, about 40 seconds left in the video. We can see that they're, you know, continuing to cruise along, heading towards that waypoint, wherever that's at. Uh, it's now 11 kilometers away. And you can see we're just basically just cruising right above the trees, um, just keeping that flight path vector just above the trees. About 520 MSL, 130 AGL. Hopefully you can see, you know, some of that stuff in action. It's a lot going on. Uh, I'll try to get some video of some shooting. So there's some other, you know, symbology that's going to gonna appear there. But typically... Uh, that's, that's the stuff that you're mainly going to be looking at while you're flying the Apache. So hopefully you enjoyed the uh, video, a little introduction to it, and I uh, will talk to you guys later.